Oh, we're getting a look here at some PS4 gameplay. Very richly detailed environment. And I see uh, some bad news, I think, uh, just outside that locker. Yep. Tell me a little bit about how Amanda Ripley, or the player, it interacts with the alien. So, you know, alien isolation is, is very much about survival. It's not about trying to kill the alien. And, and so that, that sort of shift in emphasis really makes uh, the player have to really think about to try and make sure uh, that the alien the can't, can't actually uh, uh, spot you. Uh, so you can hide inside objects, behind objects, under objects. And look at the detail on that model and the animation. It's, yeah. I had a chance to play this actually a few months ago, an early version on PS4, and uh, it, it's stunning. The visuals are excellent, as you can see here. Very faithful to that sort of, you guys have described it, a lo-fi, sci-fi yeah. yeah. world. And we have a motion tracker here, which is a really effective way to, to jack up the tension. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're sort of dueling wits with the, the galaxy's most formidable predator. Talk a little bit about what the player's going to need to do to stay out of the way of the alien. Right, so yeah, I mean, like, you've got the motion tracker. It's quite, a bit, quite an imperfect device, but it, it's, it's a very physical thing. We didn't want it to feel like um, some kind of magic map. Um, it wanted to feel like it was something that you actually held to hold and, and use and look at. Um, at the same time, uh, we also give the player, um, there's a crafting system, so as you navigate through the world and explore and you find objects, you can put these components together to build tools and devices which if used at the right time, uh, in the right place, might change the odds. Um, uh, so for example, there's, a, there's this strange contraption we call the noise maker, which is uh, uh, two speakers with a bit of circuitry. And if you throw that in the world, it starts making a, this really strange sounds, but that will attract the attention of anything around. And that might give you the chance to, to slip through. Um, so interestingly here, the player has um, just spied there's, um, so on the station there's, um, uh, a sort of small inhabitants, and they're, they're in the same situation as the player. They're desperate to survive, uh, and, and they're really unpredictable. Sometimes they're, they're kind of positive, and sometimes they're negative. And they're, the player's just spotted someone, and uh, rather than find out how that's going to go out, go down, uh, they've decided to, to actually put themselves at risk and, and go inside the, the duct. I was actually impressed that the controls in the game are, are pretty simple. It's not, you know, you don't have to fumble with a lot of buttons, but you actually have control over the narrowness and the width of, the, of that flashlight beam. You can focus it or expand it. Talk about how that factors into gameplay. Well, so light, light's really important. Um, you know, the, 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 the station is this very um, broken environment, and so um, being able to navigate your way is a really important part of the game. You know, uh, it's, it's almost acts as a puzzle in itself. That's something that really occupies the player. Uh, and obviously, with the alien around, you're having to navigate under a huge amount of pressure. And so light, light is, is important. But of course, at the same time, uh, if you switch your light on, then that's a massive beacon to the, to the alien. And, uh, and so you have to use, you know, again, it's using what you have uh, at the right place at the right time and, and using it uh, you know, uh, uh, in a way that will, will help you to survive. Now, I love this effect here with this dazzling sunlight sort of blasting through these, uh, these windows. I think this list looks so good. This is such a good-looking game on PS4. It's also on PS3, though, as well. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, for a long time we were developing uh, on, on, on PlayStation 3, you know, kind of solely. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, the, the, the core experience for both platforms is, 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 is you know, is the same. Um, you know, I think we've we got some real rocket scientists back, at, back at, uh, at the studio. And, you know, we're using our own proprietary tech on, on these platforms. And it really, you know, I think we knew what we wanted to make from the start. We wanted to make this really immersive experience, which would be about lights and be about effects and about, about sound. And so it felt like the, 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 the right path for us was to create our own, our own technology in order to, well, I think, to I think deliver that, this. That kind of really comes, goes all the way back to what, it kind of, what I think is horror. It's about the unknown, about not knowing what's around the corner. And the fact that it, it is unpredictable and dynamic and reactive uh, means that uh, you, know, you, you can't be sure. It, it, it does keep you the tension. Um, I guess I mean, that's the fun thing for us is, you know, we've been working on this game for over three years. And, you know, we, as developers, we play the game every day, all day, every day. Um, and yet, you know, it, this game gets our hearts thumping and, and uh, you know, we die the game know, we, from the, we, from the uh, main campaign. And uh, here, the, the player is trying to, oh, they're trying to hack their way into uh -oh. uh, the system. Uh, but they were, they've now been a, a, uh, approached by um, and attacked by these really uh, super tough and super strong uh, synthetics. Um, I, I prefer the term artificial person myself. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Yeah, but the, um, and, 
and you know the the, the 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 like I said, they're super tough, and so the players just use the the iconic flamethrower uh, to try and take them down. Uh, looks like they had a, a they had a few pistol rounds, so they've used those. Uh, but the player also has a, a EMP mine, which hopefully they'll Look use at this. that. This is bad right. news. Okay, so that's that's thunder, and hopefully we'll go in and, and try and finish them off. Now these synthetics, uh, as we've seen from the first film and from the second, are quite tough. Yeah, I mean, so the the station is run by uh, a different corporation. It's run by Siegson, which is a, a new a, a new uh, part of the the, the universe. Um, they're nowhere near as advanced as Wayne Yutani, so this is their version of. Uh, uh, well, they, they can't they can't produce androids at the same level as Ash, and so this is their kind of much more uh, back to basics version. Um, like, like I said, you know, earlier, you know, in, during the game, they they are uh, positive, uh, uh, and they help the player, uh, but um, it's unpredictable. You, you're not sure wh which way they're going to go. Now, I did see a, a handgun come out there at one point to shoot the the synthetic. It looked like. I'm, I'm assuming if you try that against the yeah, alien, I think all that's the boys in the world uh, is, uh, attracts the alien. <laughs> And, uh, and the alien has, uh, instead of charging at the character, at the player, has uh, gone back into the vents, gone over their head.